Number 49. Assuming ideal solution behavior, what is the molar mass of a solution of 5.00 grams of a compound, which is in 25.00 grams of carbon tetrachloride? And they did tell us that the normal boiling point for the carbon tetrachloride was 76.8 degrees Celsius, and it has a KB value of 5.02 degrees Celsius per molality. And then this solution boils at 81.5 degrees Celsius. Um, and this is at 1 ATM. So we have to outline the steps necessary to answer the question, and then we have to solve the problem. So in this case, um, the, the whole thing here is that we want to find out what the molar mass is. Now, this is going all the way back to the beginning of chem, right? If we wanted to find a molar mass of some substance, right? It's something divided by something else. And a molar mass, the units that we use on the periodic table with those atomic masses, is grams per mole. Now, if you want to find a molar mass, it's generally only of one compound, one molecule, one element. So in this case, I'm just going to say that it's whatever the grams of the certain compound you have divided by the certain amount of moles of the compound that you have. If you have these two amounts, and you know how many grams you have, you know how many moles you have, you can divide the two, and that will always get you the molar mass. Now, in this case, they said we want to find the molar mass of a solution that has the five grams of the compound. So in this case, I already know that my mass is 5.00 grams. So we're basically halfway done with the problem. <laughs> Uh, the only thing that we have to find out is the moles, right? If I just scan this again quickly, they don't tell me anything about how many moles I have, but they give me this other information. They give me a pure boiling point, a KB value, what it really boils at. So I'm probably going to use these uh, pieces of information to solve for the moles of that compound. And then once I can do that, or once I find that out, I can use this formula. So... I say to myself, okay, what formula do I know that has a boiling point uh, in it and a KB value? Now, capital KB in this case is not your equilibrium constant, right, for a base. This one actually has units. The unit KB is your boiling point constant. And this is for your, I'll just say boiling point constant. The KB value is always for your solvent. It's always the bigger amount, generally it's going to be a liquid, in which you place your solute in your solvent. Now, we had 5 grams of a certain compound, and we are dunking it into 25 grams of carbon tetrachloride. From this information, the 5 grams would be the solute, and the 25 grams would be the solvent. The solvent always goes with a KB value and a boiling point. So now I say to myself, what formulas do I know that has boiling points and your boiling point constants? It's this formula right here. Maybe I'll put it up here. Delta TB, this triangle just means the change. So it's the change in the boiling point in degrees Celsius equals that boiling point constant times a molality times an I value. So this is molality. And the I value is called a Van't Hoff factor. Van't Hoff factor. No idea why it's letter I. There's no I's in here, but whatever, we'll keep going. So, I guess for letter A, let's see if we need to solve for anything before we plug any of this in. Well, we definitely have a KB value. They told us that already. The KB was 5.02 degrees Celsius per molality. So, the correct units are here, right? Your delta TB in this case is always going to be uh, in Celsius. But now here's the thing, right? This boiling point, BP boiling point, this boiling point of the carbon tetrachloride is if you did not have any other solute in it. 
This would be of the pure solvent. But now, because we have some type of compound, it's boiling at 81.5. So, there was a change. It started off with 76.8, but then once you added the 5 grams of the compound, it rose to 81.5 degrees Celsius. Now, just know that a boiling point will always increase. You will never have a lower value for your boiling point uh, than your pure value. So, a boiling point will always increase. But now we just have to find that change. So step one is to find the delta TB, the change in that boiling point. So maybe I'll work alongside here and I'll, I'll say letter B. Well, if we know that we had now an 81.5 degrees Celsius, this is of, this is the solution. and the pure one was 76.8, I could minus the two of them to get the change. 76. Keep in mind that this delta TB is always going to be a positive number. So if you do your subtraction and you actually take the minus number and you know the lower number then minus the bigger number and you get a negative, just make it positive. So 81.5 minus 76.8. Okay, so I get a 4.7 degrees Celsius, and that is the change. Okay, so we have this number. This is 4.7. So we have my delta TB, check. We have a KB, they told us that, 5.02. Molality and an I value. Now, molality is moles of solute divided by kilograms of the solvent. But we said that we had five grams of the compound, but we have no idea what this compound is, right? It's a mystery. We do know that the solvent is the carbon tetrachloride, but how can I convert the five grams of the compound into moles when I don't have a molar mass? I don't have an actual formula. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're solving for it. So chances are we're going to have to solve for molality, which means that we should know the Van Hoff factor. Now, they did say the only thing that they said was we're assuming ideal solution behavior. Under ideal solution behavior, you uh, will only have the one compound that is floating or, you know, interacting in your carbon tetrachloride. This compound will not break up. So an I value of one, because this is ideal solution, exists. So we can, we can make the assumption that this is not a ionic compound. Ionic compounds will dissolve into their ions, and that's when your I values are going to change, like 2 to 3 to 4. But in an ideal solution, your I value is equal to 1. So we have this number. So the first thing, or now step 2, is we are going to solve for the molality. So here we go, delta TB equals KB times M times I. So 4.7 equals the KB value, which was 5.02, times X, and then times by 1, right? But anything times by 1 is essentially the same. So in essence, we can just divide on both sides by 5.02. Five point zero two, five point zero two. This cancels out, and we get x equals, which is the molality. This number divided by five point zero two, and I get zero point nine three six three units for molality. You could just put that little squiggly m. Don't get this confused with capital M. Capital M is molarity. Now, since we have the molality, we can solve for the moles of the solute, right? We can now use this formula and plug it in. So step three is to find the moles of the solute. 
which is the actual compound, right? The five grams. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this box here. And maybe I'll put it over here that if we know that the molality, we just found that out, 0 0.9363, we don't know the moles of the solute, that's X, and now the kilograms of the solvent. Well, we said that the 25 grams of the tarbon, carbon tetrachloride, that was the solvent. So we know that we have 25.00 grams of it, but for this formula to work, we need kilograms. Going from grams to kilograms, back to basics, right? Back to like chemistry all the way in the beginning. You just divide by 1,000, or you can take the decimal and move it to the left three times. So you have 0 0.02500 kilograms. And now, let's solve. So my molality is 0 0.9363 equals x over the 0 0.02500 cross multiply, right? The molality times the kilograms, that's going to get me the moles. So maybe I'll just take this whole number, times it by 0 0.025, and I get 0. Point, oh, maybe I'll make this in red, 0. 0, 0.0234. Okay, that's the moles of the compound, right? And that's the moles that we have over here. So we have 0. 0.0234 moles. So finally, what we can do, maybe I'll just bring this over a little bit, because we are at our final step. Now, since we have the mass, that's the grams, we just found the moles, we can solve for molar mass. So maybe I'll say molar mass, molar mass equals, let's see, the five grams, right, 5.0, 0 g divided by the 0 0.0234 moles. That's very tight. Sorry about that, guys. So I'm going to take my 5, and I'm just going to divide by the answer. And there we go. We get a 213. I mean, maybe we'll do 3 sig fig, so 214 grams per mole, and that is the molar mass. That's the answer. So pretty, pretty big compound, whatever this compound is, 214 grams per mole. And that's it. What'd you think? Thank you for tuning in, and I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you with more problems. Check the links for, uh, you know, check the links in the description for some goodies. We might have some study guides for you. Always check back on the channel just to see what's new and upcoming that we got for you. We love helping you out. My brother and I thank you so, so much. Um, we really do appreciate you. And I hope you're having a great day, okay? I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.